seconds, all of those comments are um, reflected in um, uh, everybody's copy of the document. So if you make a comment and Joe makes a comment, then Joe will see your changes. Um, then once uh, you've made your comments, uh, the users can check their comments back in. And then you can use the comments to go back in and modify your source documents. So it's a good way of uh, controlling the, um, the whole review cycle from XML. And uh, it's, a, it's a pretty good tool and uh, worth, worth investigating, particularly if you need to, you know, you want to con have control over your reviews, keep track of how many people review, who does a lot of the reviewing, who doesn't do the reviewing, um, all sorts of things like that. So I'd say follow up on the Just website if you want more information, or follow up with Just um, directly if you want more information about Reviewer. Yeah. All right. So we've talked about spell check and languages. So let's talk about the Web Help Output format, which is probably what most of you are here for. So the Web Help Output, as I've said before, it's a tripane output format. Um, it features a table of contents with a tree control. Um, it uh, provides indexes, access to index. It provides a search function. There's highlighting, so um, your current position in the table of contents is nicely tracked. Um, the search string, if you're using the search, um, you can see that reflected in your, um, in your output document. Uh, it supports browse sequences and a print button. And I think perhaps what we should do is just take a look at it. Before we take a look at it, though, let's just take a look at how we generate it. So to generate the web help, it's just a standard output format, just like a um, PDF or um, XHTML. So if we want to generate output for this data map, we can say generate output for data map. And if you notice in the deliverable types, now we also have web help. So with web help, I can now say OK. And of course, uh, XML asks me if I want to save my current map state. I say yes. And so now we go through the usual thing. We're running the uh, data open toolkit and applying the uh, web help transform. And this doesn't take long. Of course, it's a small, small document. So now it says uh, delivery, deliverable has been successfully created, so let's open the file in my browser. So now I'll bring this on the screen. And da-da, here's the help that we've generated. And so as I say, um, try pane help. We have access to the table of contents. We can see an index. I've added a few index entries to, this, to the files just for this purpose. We can search. In the table of contents is a nice tree control. And so um, there's expand and collapse. We use highlighting, and that helps you track where you are. Um, there are browse sequences supported. So we can click forward and back and move through our documents. In the index, we can uh, simply click on a link and, of course, go directly to the page where that link is. In our search, of course, we can type a search term and my favorite word and get one of these. We can click on one of these links, then see the one of the topics that contains the word that I'm looking for, and that word is highlighted in our output. So the next thing is, now some of you may just go, if, if you've got XML 6, may just go and try this. And if you've been using previous versions of XML, you may get this message. It's a target did it to web help does not exist in this project. Um, and what the recommended, you can go to the uh, Just website, to the forums, and they have this spelled out quite clearly there. But I'm also giving this to you here. Um, what you want to do is first back up your existing copy of the Dita Open Toolkit following this path. We'll talk about the path in just a little bit more. Um, so then you go in the XML interface, you go to Tools, Configure Output, 
and then follow the advanced tab and then there's a line and we'll just take a look at this in a minute so um, change command did OT per user version what you do is take whatever the number is there you add one to it and then you generate your output and then it'll ask you do you want to redeploy the data open toolkit you say yes then if you've got customizations in the saved version of the data open toolkit you'll then have to bring them back into um, the current version of the data open toolkit that's here so let's just take a look at this for a minute so here we have tools configure output and the deliverable types so here we have web help Oh, sorry, no, we need to go to advanced. And you notice here is a command data OT per user version. And right now, mine says one. If I got that message, all I do is change this to a two and then say OK. And then actually go through my generate output. And I could generate output for a map or a topic. And it would ask me if I want to redeploy the toolkit. But with any luck, you won't get that message. So uh, the tour of the toolkit, I've actually done that al already. We've got the table of contents, expanse, and collapses. We have our um, highlighting the index. Similarly, uh, we've got highlighting there. We've got search. And um, search um, is currently single word search. So if you try and enter a phrase or multiple words, it's not going to find anything. But uh, it does work nicely as a single word. So next, let's talk about how to customize this web help. So to do that, we'll give you a little behind the scenes tour. We'll look at how it's built. Then we'll talk about the layout, the navigation panes, and how to modify our fonts, and uh, a few other things we can do with it. So as I said before, or I, I, I sort of put this off, I said, the Data Open Toolkit files for XML are in sort of an odd place. Um, they're not in program files. They're not in the Open Toolkit. They are stored in Documents and Settings, Username, Application Data. And let me go here to, um, let's see. Hang on. So here we have, we're in Documents and Settings. Oh. Excuse me, I just like to show this cleanly. So we have Documents and Settings. We have My Name and then Application Data. Within Application Data, we want to find SoftQuad. In SoftQuad, there are two folders for XMetal. There's XMetal and XMetal Shared. We want to go to XMetal Shared, and that's where the data OT resides for you, for, um, for you when you're using that machine. So any modifications that you want to do to the data open toolkit, and that includes just uh, you know, simple things like changing uh, CSS files, you need to do in these files here. And most specifically, once we're in the Open Toolkit, let's take a look. Um, within the Open Toolkit, of course, we have the Demo folder where most plugins reside for some reason. And within Demo, we have Web Help. So let me move this over a little bit. So this Web Help folder, this is the actual, this is the place where the Web Help exists. So if you're going to modify